Sand may be coarse and rough and irritating and gets everywhere, but it's having a heck of a year from numerous cross-media Dune releases to a brand new Mad Max to the latest game in DeVere's shared Cardboardian Kamushi universe, the titular Sand, a game of pickup and delivery and dubiously styled sandworms. The world has ended, but people live on, driving caravans of worms with plants and other goods to and from distant lands across trade routes in a desert landscape. Gameplay takes place across six rounds, where players take three turns each, using available action tokens they selected at the start of their turn. All players have one token of each color, and initially three slots for setting their available actions, and spending a token allows you to take an action corresponding to the strength of the affiliated colored six-sided dice rolled at the beginning of the round. Some actions, like traveling, which consumes your wormy resources, water, food, and health, only care about the strength, but not the color. Some actions, like picking up resources, care about color, but not number, and then caring for your worm refill the aforementioned resources based on color up to the number on the dice. The real trick of the game is that picking up basic goods both locks use of that color action token and takes up an action slot, cause you know, your worm's only got so much real estate and packing it up weighs it down. Sand is all about choices, rhythm, and timing. And while the individual actions themselves are simple, there is so much to consider. Take travel, for instance. Each location is connected to nearby areas by both shortcut desert paths or longer two-legged roadways. The former, taking only one dice and less water, becomes a heavy health cost. The latter is a less efficient use of actions, but lower resource impact and can use less powerful dice. Let's say you got some goods to sell. Well, you roll up into camp, and if it's the right goods at the right camp, they'll give you a valuable artifact or relic in addition to the sale, which can also be sold throughout the desert or even trekked back to the docks for buco points. So maybe you'll exercise some more laborious efforts and planning and travel further to sell the right goods at the right place. And that seems pretty straightforward. But wait, when you sell goods, they don't go back to the supply like any other game. What are you thinking? No, they go to your beautifully slotted board, covering up a reward, which yes, could be money, but it could also be leveling up your worm bro for more efficient travel capabilities or unlocking a companion of your choice, who improve your actions, or even in the case of the shaman, you can start converting resources into forbidden contraband, which sells for huge bucks at the docks, but smuggling comes at a price and you'll no longer get to participate in the completion of mission cards that can get claimed at the end of each round. So what you sell, how soon you sell it, where you go to sell it, and what you unlock when you actually get a chance to unlock something is just as much about opportunity and need as it is long-term strategy. Sand is a dense, character-driven pickup and deliver that doesn't quite have the automation of an engine builder, but a familiar arc of empowerment as you go from struggling to make a sale in the early game to whipping across the desert with ease, aided by companions allowing double movement per dice or an insanely cute baby worm who lets you carry two goods in one action space. If there's anything that feels awkward about the whole affair, it's just how incredibly powerful and low-effort individual plans get by the end, exploiting combinations of actions and bonuses and the varying asymmetric player powers. That, and there's also a lot of niche systems in the game that feel important, but tangential, hovering on the periphery. From the quasi-area control song tokens you can put in a town, boosting each of your sales in the map by one, but can also be kicked out by another player placing their song tokens, to the minor tribe tokens in towns where you claim a consolation prize of bonus points for selling the less desired goods in a town, only to get more points at the end if you have the most songs or tribe tokens. To the extra action of the aforementioned shaman who, when unlocked, if you spend an action token of the corresponding color of a corresponding thief in a town with a corresponding cube, they can snag that cube and place it in your warehouse, which is plopped on the board, which can act as a storage to be picked up or manipulated later. It all makes for more opportunities, considerations, and presumably better balance, but it does mark a significant uptick in the opacity of both the strategy and the design. 
That said, this game has been immediately endearing to me. From the beautiful presentation and the continually amazing balance Devere strikes with the really high quality, but not totally ostentatious components, to the wide open and imaginative structure with a more character focused pickup and delivery than the traditional infrastructure building often seen in the genre. It's rife with juicy decisions and interesting optimizations, and for those who like a bit of complexity and a real sandbox box sort of playground to play within, I think they're going to really riff with this. On the other hand, people who want more of an infrastructure foothold or they want a little bit less open-ended of a game may find this drier than the desert that you play in. For me, it's been an absolute blast, both with the solo mode with its rudimentary opponents surfing the sands and stealing cubes before you can get them, and the multiplayer, which pretty much the same. Sand isn't always smooth, it's coarse and rough, and there are little odds and ends to the design everywhere, but the result has been well worth my time, and has been one of the most interesting pickup and delivers I have played in a long time. And that's our review, but let me know what are your favorite pickup and deliver games, put it in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching, thanks for supporting, thanks for being such an awesome community. You know that I've been Jack for the Cardboard Herald.